Hello students, welcome to the lecture on collective bargaining and after the lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the concept and nature of collective bargaining, describe the advantages and disadvantages of collective bargaining, explain the collective bargaining characteristics, discuss collective bargaining versus participative management. Let's start with a brief introduction to collective bargaining. Collective bargaining is a process of decision making between parties representing employer and employee interests which implies the negotiation and the continuous application of an agreed set of rules to govern the substantive and procedural terms of the employment relationship. In most OECD countries, basic rules pertaining to collective bargaining are laid down in labor law. Although there are important differences in the extent to which governments intervene in labor management relationships. Collective bargaining is specifically an industrial relations mechanism or tool and is an aspect of negotiation applicable to the employment relationship. As a process, the two are in essence the same and the principles applicable to negotiations are relevant to collective bargaining as well. In collective bargaining, certain essential conditions need to be satisfied such as the existence of the freedom of association and a labor law system. Further, since the beneficiaries of collective bargaining are in daily contact with each other, negotiations take place in the background of a continuing relationship which ultimately motivates the parties to resolve the specific issues. Let's discuss the nature of collective bargaining. Collective bargaining could also be defined as negotiations relating to terms of employment and conditions of work between an employer, a group of employers or an employer's organization on the one hand and representative workers' organization on the other with a view to reaching agreement. There are several essential features of collective bargaining, all of which cannot be reflected in a single definition or description of the process. It is not equivalent to collective agreements because collective bargaining refers to the process or means and collective agreements to the possible result of bargaining. Collective bargaining may not always lead to a collective agreement. It is a method used by trade unions to improve the terms and the conditions of employment of the members. It seeks to restore the unequal bargaining position between the employer and the employee. Where it leads to an agreement, it modifies rather than replaces the individual contract of employment because it does not create the employer-employee relationship. The process is barbatite, but in some developing countries, the state plays a role in the form of a conciliator where disagreements occur or where collective bargaining impinges on government policy. The conditions for successful collective bargaining. A pluralistic outlook involves the acceptance within the political system of pressure groups, example religious groups, unions, business associations, political parties, with specific interests with which a government has dialogue, with a view to effecting compromises by making concessions. Pluralism implies a process of bargaining between these groups and between one and more of them on the one hand and the government on the other. It therefore recognizes these groups as the checks and the balances which guarantee democracy. Did you know that the term collective bargaining was first used in 1891 by the economist theorist Sidney Webb? Let's now talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of collective bargaining. Following are the advantages and the disadvantages of collective bargaining. Can it lead to high performance, workplace where labor and management jointly engage in problem solving, addressing issues on an equal standing? It provides legally based bilateral relationships, management's rights are clearly spelled out, employers and employees' rights protected by binding collective bargaining agreement, multi-year contracts may provide budgetary predictability on salary and other compensation issues. Unions may become strong allies in protecting higher education from the effects of an economic slowdown. Promotes fairness and consistency in employment policies and personal decisions within and across institutions. Employees may choose whether they want union representation. A strong labor management partnership may enable the workforce development needed for engaging the technology revolution. The disadvantages are as follows. The management's authority and the freedom are much more restricted by negotiated rules. It creates a significant potential for polarization between the employees and the managers. Disproportionate effect of relativity, relatively few active employees on the many in the bargaining unit. This is particularly the case when collective bargaining involves a system-wide structure of elections. It increases bureaucratization and requires longer time needed for decision making. It increases the participation by external entities, that is arbitrators, state labor relations board, in higher education's decision making. 
It protects the status quo, thereby inhibiting innovation and change. This is particularly the case when the change involves privatizations. More difficult for employees at smaller campuses to have their voices heard. Higher management costs associated with negotiating and administering the agreements. It eliminates ability of the management to make unilateral changes in wages, hours and other terms and conditions of employment. It restricts the management's ability to deal directly with individual employees. It increases the dependence on the private sector for certain services, particularly those requiring technological competence may be compromised. Contract administration is a very difficult process to manage and significantly changes the skill set required of managers and the supervisors. Advantages and disadvantages of collective bargaining based on the proposed legislation. Collective bargaining characteristics. The characteristics of collective bargaining are defined as it is a group process wherein one group representing the employers and the other representing the employees sit together to negotiate the terms of employment. Negotiations form an important aspect of the process of collective bargaining, that is there is considerable scope for discussion, compromise or mutual give and take in collective bargaining. Collective bargaining is a formalized process by which employers and independent trade unions negotiate terms and conditions of employment and the ways in which certain employment related issues are to be regulated at national, organizational and workplace levels. Collective bargaining is a process in the sense that it consists of a number of steps. It begins with the presentation of the Charter of Demands and ends with reaching an agreement which would serve as the basic law governing the labor management relations over a period of time in an enterprise. Moreover, it is a flexible process and not fixed or static. Mutual trust and understanding serve as the byproducts of harmonious relations, relations between the two parties. It is a bipartite process. This means that there are only two parties involved in the process of collective bargaining. The negotiations generally take place between the employees and the management. It is a form of participation. Collective bargaining is a complementary process that is each party needs something that the other party has. Labor can increase productivity and management can pay better for their efforts. Collective bargaining tends to improve the relations between the workers and the union on the one hand and the employer on the other. Collective bargaining is a continuous process. It enables industrial democracy to be effective. It uses cooperation and consensus for settling disputes rather than conflict and conf confrontation. Collective bargaining takes into account the day-to-day -day changes, policies, the potentialities, capacities and the interest. Collective bargaining. It's not easy and it's never fast. But it works. Here's why. The process starts with you. You come up with an idea to make your workplace or work experience better. You share your idea with coworkers and discover many of them feel the same way. Union activists from your workplace bring your idea and others to a local meeting. Together, they discuss changes to the existing contract. Then, they vote on which changes they want, and proposals are born. Congratulations! Your proposal was selected and will be moving forward. Next, the proposal moves to a component meeting. Here, activists from around the province working in the same sector prioritize submissions. From here, proposals sent forward from the components go to the elected bargaining committee. Although the process to get proposals to the bargaining committee varies slightly by sector, in each sector union members have the opportunity to present proposals for the bargaining committee to take a look at and form into what is called the bargaining package. They look at hundreds of individual proposals to come up with the bargaining package. It's a tough job. During the process, similar proposals emerge, while some are dropped because they're not viable. The bargaining committee has to make hard decisions about which direction to take when proposals contradict one another. Fortunately, your proposal has made the cut and is added into the package of proposals that will move forward. This package goes to the bargaining conference. Here, Members from the committee sit with your fellow BCGEU members from around the province to discuss priorities and bargaining strategy. The package is then handed back to the bargaining committee for finalization and prepared for presentation to the employer. In the case of public service bargaining, this is the government. But other sectors such as health, community social services, and post-secondary institutions will be bargaining with groups of employers called employer associations. The employer then sends their own package of proposals to the bargaining committee and negotiations begin. Some proposals will be accepted right away. 
Other proposals from both sides will die on the table as each bargaining committee decides they are not acceptable. Still others will be amended to something both sides can agree on. This process continues and proposals that are agreed upon are collected into a tentative agreement. Once they reach this stage, all members covered by that agreement have the opportunity to discuss it and vote on whether or not to accept it. When it comes down to it, you and your coworkers get the final say. Sometimes the two parties cannot reach a tentative agreement or members turn it down. This does not mean the process is over. At this stage, you and your fellow members are asked to vote on what action you want to take to move the process forward. This includes a strike vote. A positive strike vote doesn't automatically mean that members will strike, but can be very useful in applying pressure. When a majority of your fellow union members vote to accept a tentative agreement, it is ratified, and all the proposals in it, including yours, become legally enforceable. Through the support of your union, your idea to improve your workplace will now be put into practice. Now get ready to reap the benefits, or the wage increases, or additional time off. Whatever it was, it's now yours. But remember, this kind of fair and democratic process only exists for the one-third of workers who are union members. There's power. It is a political activity frequently undertaken by professional negotiators. Workplace in different cultures. So the principles of organizational behavior and industrial relations apply universally across natures and nations and cultures. This issue not only has fascinated scholars and policy makers, but at critical points in history has influenced the course of international events. After World War II, for example, the head of the U.S. forces occupying Japan imposed American-style labor laws and industrial relation practices under the belief that they would help ensure that Japan would not fall back into a militaristic or a totalitarian state, thus collective bargaining. It is a collective process in which representatives of both the management and the employee participate. It is a continuous process which aims at establishing stable relationships between the parties involved, not only involves the bargaining agreement, but also involves the implementation of such an agreement. It attempts in achieving discipline in the industry. It is a flexible approach as the parties involved have to adopt a flexible attitude towards negotiations. The importance of collective bargaining. Collective bargaining includes not only negotiations between the employers and the unions, but it also includes the process of resolving labor management conflicts. Thus, collective bargaining is essentially a recognized way of creating a system of industrial jurisprudence. It acts as a method of introducing civil rights into the industry, that is, the management should be conducted by rules rather than arbitrary decision making. It establishes the rules which define and restrict the traditional authority exercised by the management. The importance to the employees. Collective bargaining develops a sense of self-respect and responsibility among the employees. It increases the strength of the workforce, thereby it increases their bargaining capacity as a group. Collective bargaining, it increases the morale and the productivity of the employees. It restricts the management's freedom for arbitrary action against the employees. Moreover, unilateral actions by the employer are also discouraged. Effective collective bargaining machinery strengthens the trade union's movement. The workers feel motivated as they can approach the management on various matters and bargain for higher benefits. It helps in securing a prompt and fair settlement of grievances. It provides a flexible means for the adjustment of wages and employment conditions to the economic and the technological changes in the industry as a result of which the chances for conflicts are reduced. The importance to employers. It becomes easier for the management to resolve issues at the bargaining level rather than taking up complaints of individual workers. Collective bargaining tends to promote a sense of job security among the employees and thereby they tend to reduce the cost of labor turnover to the management. Collective bargaining opens up the channel of communication between the workers and the management increases the worker participation in decision making. Collective bargaining plays a vital role in settling and preventing industrial disputes. The importance to society. Collective bargaining leads to industrial peace in the country. It results in establishment of a harmonious industrial climate which supports, which helps the pace of a nation's effort towards economic and social development since the obstacles to such a development can be reduced considerably. The discrimination and exploitation of workers is constantly being checked. It provides a method for the regulation of the conditions of the employment of those who are directly concerned about them. Let's move to the next topic, which is collective bargaining versus participative management. 
Before differentiating between collective bargaining and workers' participation management, we should first understand the true meaning of these terms. To begin with, collective bargaining consists of negotiations between an employer and a group of employees called the Collective Bargaining Agreement CBA. According to ILO, collective bargaining is purely a bipartite process and defined it to be negotiations about working conditions and terms of employment between an employer, a group of employers or one or more employers organization on the one hand and one or more representative workers organization on the other with a view to reaching an agreement. The definition coined by ILO during 1973 describes the process of collective bargaining only without looking at its purpose. Probably because of this, the ILO in the year 1980 broadened definition as follows. Collective bargaining as an institutional procedure of joint determination of the rules to govern the terms and the conditions of employment of the workers concerned, the terms and the conditions of the employment of the workers concerned and the labor management relations itself. Workers' participation in management, WPM, on the other hand, is crucial for better results in an organization. The term WPM is understood differently by the involved parties. For management, it is a joint consultation prior to decision-making. For workers, it means co-determination, while for government, it is an association of labor with management without the final authority or the responsibility in decision-making. WPM can be linked with the textile industry during the year 1920 when workers and employers required settling disputes by mutual discussion. Industrial Disputes Act was enacted in the year 1947 by the government for the purpose of prevention and settlement of industrial disputes.
perceptions and understandings about collective bargaining and CBA. Collective bargaining, on the other hand, is essentially a confronting process. In this process, management and unions sit across each other and wrest advantages from each other by sacrificing some issues that depends on the relative strengths of each party. Collective decisions by managements and unions must be arrived at through participative methods rather than coercive methods or depending on the relative strength of the parties. Hence, collective bargaining is not a form of participation. It is one method through which workers are able to influence the management decision, but it is essentially an alternative method, whereas participation is by nature a different method altogether in labor management relations and can be looked as an alternative to bargaining. International experience supports this view. Countries which had strong collective systems, like the USA, now have little participation. European countries with heterogeneous policies and weaker bargaining, however, have stronger participative systems. In Japan, participative culture is ingrained. Japanese organizations believe in collective effort that is teamwork. They do not believe in individualistic approach. Participation is primarily a matter of attitude. The Workers' Committee under the Industrial Dispute Act and the Worker Director under the Banking Regulation Act both have legislative sanction and in practice are shadowed with little substance. International practices also indicate similar tendencies. The only two countries which confirmed to practice workers' participations in the form which was created in the post-war situation were Germany and Yugoslavia, which had statutes on WPM but the substance gradually eroded. The first real scheme where some kind of participation was envisaged was the Joint Management Council, JMC. The objectives of JMC were to promote cordial relations between the management and the labor. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Collective bargaining is specifically an industrial relations mechanism or tool and is an aspect of negotiation applicable to the employment relationship. In collective bargaining, certain essential conditions need to be satisfied, such as the existence of the freedom of association and a labor law system. Collective bargaining is not for one employer, but for several, collective interest becomes a feature for both the parties to the bargaining process. Pluralism implies a process of bargaining between these groups and between one and more of them on the one hand and the government on the other. Collective bargaining involves discussions and negotiations between two groups as to the terms and conditions of employment. The Board of Regents maintains right to establish the labor-related activities that may take place on the work site subject to labor's right to appeal to State Labor Relations Board, SLRB.